Humans could have never united on their own. But the Galactic Conference would accomplish what no human had ever managed. Giving humans the motivation to unite as one. When humanity first stumbled onto the galactic stage, they had their first contact. Not after their first FTL jump, as they had hoped, but by accidentally sending a colony ship to a star system, which had begun to be expanded into by the Felu Fared into Naked Little Primate, and was equally as unpronounceable by human mouths. The unexpected nature of their meeting did little to warm relations. As the Felurisi secretly clenched one hand in anger at having another nation at his borders, they reached out their hand in friendship, inviting their new brothers among the stars to join them in the Galactic Conference. The Galactic Conference, also called THE Conference, or merely the GC by humans, purported to be a diplomatic meeting place for the different star-faring races of the galaxy to meet and conduct diplomacy. They were a neutral ground, whose purpose was to allow the many disparate star-faring races to meet and conduct their diplomacy without the fear of complex alliances pulling the entirety of the galaxy into war. In practice, however, it created a series of dependency networks that allowed the Felarusi and six other nations to control others by proxy, exchanging influence for votes on issues when they convened every 53 human days. When it was first revealed that the humans were far from united, the Felarusi could barely contain their relation. In the open, they expressed a deep regret that to prevent the conference from becoming bloated and favouring one group or another, only one human could represent them in the conference. Behind closed doors, they began to slowly reach out tenuous diplomatic ties to the various factions of humanity. And their diplomats were under orders to hint that they would favour one major group over their rival in a trade agreement. Then they took the ensuing tensions to prevent humans from having a representative in the GC. The reason given was that they weren't able to demonstrate that they had chosen a representative who would fairly represent all factions. It did come as a mild surprise when the humans heartily rejected the Felurisi offer to appoint an interim representative from their own ranks. Instead of full membership, humanity took an associate status. The various members of the conference were allowed to make treaties, but the GC served only as the venue for the signing of agreements. They did not offer any of the services that a member might have enjoyed. This exception the Felurisi pressed for, extending the humans, did more to isolate them than assist. The Felurisi washed and were satisfied that before humanity could have a chance to integrate into the conference, they had been isolated. For nearly a half century of, a mere quarter of the typical Felurisi career, they acted as if they wanted to be allies but had tied hands. Though the Felurisi's plan had been made decades ago, they had chosen to test how divided the humans were. Nearly all their hosts were met. To them, humanity was backwards, divided, individually weak and vulnerable. Though they had the potential to be a fearsome foe, the many smaller factions, some not even controlling their own planet, made subjugating them appear to be a simple task. It began with piracy. At first, reforms placed criminals and criminally inclined Ferusi on ships across the border. Human colonies and trade convoys soon found themselves under increasingly violent attack. Piracy infested the expanding border regions. While the initial gains seemed to be strong, human ships soon began to grow increasingly armed, and as the pirates grew, they always seemed to be able to meet what was being sent against them. Before the piracy poured fuel on the flames, humans had already been sceptical of their neighbours. As the attacks continued to escalate, human analysts warned that the attacks on human worlds were both an order of magnitude higher than that of the Ferusi, but also nearly exclusively by the Ferusi. Whipped up into a fury, a massive human coalition came to lay their evidence before the conference and the Felurusi delegation. They were met with a dismissive member of the delegation, who responded, We are not responsible for what criminals do within human borders. If a pirate goes into your territory, it's your job to deal with it. If you want to help, we would be more than happy to extend our patrol fleets to your territories, though the fleet would need to be compensated for services rendered. When the human delegation returned home, they called for an emergency summit which lasted for a week. Over the course of seven hectic days, Hundreds of different nations sent delegates to this summit, if only to act as observers. As the seventh day of deliberations and negotiations came to a close, there was an announcement. Delegates from across human space, longtime rivals, enemies and friend alike, stood shoulder to shoulder as a representative from the smallest nation read what the summit had agreed. He was an older man from the struggling agricultural colony of New Corsia, whose home world had suffered famine and faced starvation as a result of the rampant piracy. Though they only occupied a single dusty planet, though they had by far the lowest population of the participating nations, they had proudly held on to their independence for the past century. His short speech outlined the damages done by the pirates, how quickly those damages were rising, and why anything short of decisive action 
could not be tolerated. The final words the elected speaker of that meeting sent to the waiting ears of the galaxy irrevocably sent the humans and Florusi down the path of war. In order to protect the sanctity of our borders, to ensure the safety of our children, this summit shall adopt two measures. We shall form an international patrol fleet whose purpose is to protect sovereign territory from these criminal elements. Lawless enemies of humanity who have proven time and again to seek to victimise those who abide by the law set before them. Second, any ships found by this patrol to be conducting piracy upon vessels, commercial or private, may be offered latitude to surrender themselves for trial under the law of the nearest system they were apprehended in. Should they persist in their malfeasance, they shall be eliminated with extreme prejudice. The formation of the Stellar Security Pact will be the first step on the long road that would cast the entirety of the known galaxy into a crucible that would determine its fate for generations to come.